Um, let, let, me, let me preach this morning if you've got your Bible, want to check up on the preacher. Uh, otherwise, it'll come up on the screen uh, from Acts 28. Here we go, Acts 28, 1 to 6. The Bible says this, Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt, though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. Come on, I love Paul. He's gangster as He's the original gangster. Come on, look at him. It says, but Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up and suddenly dropped dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw he wasn't harmed, they changed their mind and decided he was a god. Two kinds of different kinds of error we see there in the passage. But they went from kind of this guy's a murderer, the snake bit him on the arm, to he's a god. But I want to preach this morning just on the simple thought, shake it off. Come on, any Taylor Swift fans out there? Come on, I titled this message for Wade. Uh, 3.5 billion watches that, that moved Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and sing Shake It Off? Come on, I know you, I know you know the words. Some of you are like, I ain't even going to talk to my neighbor. I'm definitely not singing to my neighbor. Just getting you ready for the masquerade ball. But here we go. But Paul, Paul is on this, uh, on this boat on his way to Rome because he appealed to Caesar when he was in prison for preaching the gospel and Sometimes doing the right thing gets you into trouble in the kingdom of God. And so he's in prison and they're taking him in chains. It's interesting that Paul said in Romans, when he finally got to Rome, he said, God gave me a prosperous journey. Come on, God's able to work all things together for your good. And sometimes a prosperous journey looks like being imprisoned and carried all the way to your destination. But I reckon if you're a wanted man, having armored guards with you all the way to Rome is probably a good deal, eh? And so Paul is like, on his way to Rome as a prisoner for the Lord. And he's on a boat and the boat kind of comes into this massive storm, comes out of nowhere. They run aground. The boat is destroyed and everyone swims to shore. And Paul gets on shore with the, onto shore with the rest of the guys. They meet uh, some islanders there in this island called Malta. And they begin to build a fire. And Paul goes out and gathers some sticks and he chucks the sticks on the fire. And as he's putting the sticks on the fire, he, uh, a snake comes out and the snake bites him on the hand. Paul, he just sees the snake hanging from the hand. The Bible says that he isn't harmed. I'm sure he was hurt. How many people know there's a difference between being hurt and harmed? Come on, I think we live in a, in a generation that thinks anything that's painful is bad for us. Eh? But sometimes, sometimes there's hurt. It hurts us, but it doesn't harm us. Eh? Come on, sometimes... You got to say some things to some people to hurt them, but it hurts them. The truth hurts, but it doesn't harm them. Come on, how many people know the gospel can hurt, but it doesn't harm us? Say, it's not a snake anyway. It, it doesn't harm. It bites him on the hand, and I love Paul. He just shakes it off and keeps going. Come on, I reckon when I grow up, I want to be like the Apostle Paul, eh? Because that's that's life goals right there. He's just like, oh yeah, snake bit me on the hand, shake it off, keeps going, and he goes out and gathers some more sticks and chucks them on the fire and. I want to preach from that this morning on the thought, shake it off, hey, shake it off. And, um, you know, all of us are responsible to build a fire in our life, eh? Come on, you've got to be building a fire in your personal life. So God will light a fire, but you've got a responsibility to keep it burning. You've got to go out in your personal life and gather sticks. You've got to get up early. You've got to seek God. I was talking to Clint the other day, and, and um, we went away, played some board games. It always brings our family together, board games. And uh, just unity in our home just creates that loving feeling. And uh, anyway, and, and I was talking to him the other day. He said, he was talking to Trevor Yaxley, and he said, man, Trevor Yaxley said, some of you know him, but he said, been pastoring for a while. I reckon 90% of the problems I deal with as a pastor would go away if people just spend an hour in the morning seeking God. Come on, you, you just got to gotta build a fire. You're responsible to build a fire in your own personal life. Come on, the church isn't responsible for doing that for you. You've got to go out and get some sticks and build a fire in your own personal life. And I reckon too many Christians, they're not on fire for God. They're just smoldering. And not the good kind of smoldering, the bad smoldering. They're just smoldering 
And, and uh, when you smolder, you don't put heat out anymore. You just put smoke out. And you're just a bad smell that irritates everyone's eyes around you. Hey, come on. Anyone know someone like that? Don't point. But, you know, we don't want to be those Christians. We want to be on fire for God. Hey, need to build a fire in our personal lives. Also need to build a fire in our city and in our community. Come on, that's a great picture of the church of Jesus Christ. Group of people that are gathering sticks and bringing them together and, and building a bonfire so that the shipwrecked and the hopeless and the cold and the hungry of the world can come into the house of God and find a place that's warm, that will bring hope and purpose into their life. And, but here's the thing, when you start seeking God and you start pressing in and you start setting time aside to pray and to get serious in your relationship with God and you start seeking God and saying, come on, this isn't a game. I'm going to, I signed up to serve Jesus full time. Come on, I'm in full time. When you say I'm in full time ministry and man, I'm serving God, I'm, I'm going like wholehearted in my life for the Lord. When you start building a fire in your, in your community, when you start building a fire in your life, come on, when you say, hey, I'm going to give what God has given me financially, I'm going to start contributing to the work of God. I'm going to start using my life to glorify God. When you start building a fire in your life, snakes are going to come out and bite you. It's an encouraging thought this morning, eh? Like I was discouraged before I got here, Pastor. I come to church and come on, man. I was hoping you'd say something that would cheer me up. But snakes are going to come out. They're going to bite you on the hand. And, and they're going to bite you on the hand because they want you to withdraw your hand. Come on, I feel like I've got a bit of authority to preach on this subject this morning. Hey, I've been serving the Lord for a little while. I had a few snakes bite me on the hand. And they're going to bite you on the hand because they want you to withdraw your hand hey, so that you pull back. And so you're serving God. You're saying, yeah, I'll put my hand up. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going all in. And you, you, start, you, you, you start living for the Lord. You start dealing with areas of your life. Come on, snakes are going to come out. You turn the heat up and the snakes come out. I think the church, like we want revival but revival comes, revival fire comes with more snakes coming out. They were already there. You just couldn't see them. But when the fire gets turned up, the snakes come out. Come on. Sometimes we think when I make a stand for God in my life, everything's going to get better. Like when I make a stand for God in my family, everything's going to get better. It's not what I read in my Bible. <laughs> when you make a stand, the snakes are going to come out. The good news is they were already there anyway. They were just happy to coexist with you, eh? While you were kind of, while you're living in compromise. But, but when you turn the heat up, the snakes will come out. And what we've got to learn to do as believers, if we're going to serve God faithfully, we've got to learn to shake it off. Come on, I feel a song coming on this morning with some dance moves. No, you've got to learn to shake it off. Come on, you've got to learn, eh? Don't encourage me to sing it. The sermon will go downhill, eh? My front row is supposed to be there to support me. We've got to learn to shake it off, and. I don't know, I've never been bitten by a snake before, as you can probably imagine, New Zealand. You know, like, but, but I have been bitten by a dog. I've been bitten by a dog. I was thinking about it this week. I remember doing a paper run, and uh, so I think I was 14 years old, and I cracked it with my first job as a paper run, making 40 cents an hour. And, um, and uh, so I was out there delivering papers, and my chain came off my bike. Lived in South Auckland, and... And I went down, like, true, I went down to, like, fix my chain up. And an Alsatian came out of nowhere and bit me on the butt. It's a true story. It just it, it bit me on the butt. It's like that Forrest Gump movie, yeah, like, bit me on the buttocks. And, like, it like, bit me right there on the butt. And I was like, I started crying. I was 14. I started crying. And I was, like, falling on the ground and, like, making a big, I went home crying, home to my mum. And, um... And then I discovered, I showed my mum the bite mark on my bum, and there was like three teeth. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking about it this week, like three teeth. Was it like a rabid, toothless dog, or <laughs> did my genes somehow kind of take the other tooth marks? And there were three incisions, and I think they put the dog down, actually, not because of me. Come on, not because of me. It's because dogs aren't supposed to bite humans, but... but um. I've never been bitten by a snake, but I have been bitten by a dog. And, and I can only imagine it's a painful thing to be bitten by a snake in the hand, eh? But not only that, this is a deadly snake. So, like, not only, I think the physical pain would have been the light part of the experience. A, a poisonous, deadly snake biting you on the hand 
It's like, man, you got your heart racing. Everything is going crazy. Like, this thing could kill you. This thing could end your life right now. But I love Paul. He doesn't pull back. He doesn't say, man, oh, I don't like this bonfire stuff. I'm going to sit down and have a rest. He doesn't even say, I'm going to let somebody else gather sticks. I've done, my, done, my, done enough. I'm going to just sit down and let someone else gather sticks. He doesn't say, I don't like this bonfire. I'm going to build me a bonfire down the road. Come on. He doesn't say, oh, I don't like this big bonfire. I'm going to build me my own small bonfire and just stay home and build my own small bonfire with two mates. You know, like, he doesn't say that. He just shakes it off. Well, I heard someone say, you've got to be a Christian to survive church, eh? You've got to be a Christian to survive church. And sometimes you just got to shake some things off. Come on, shake it off. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to someone. Come on, don't withdraw your hand when hard things come. Just learn to shake it off and to keep serving. Keep moving forward. Keep serving God. Sometimes you've got to just shake off some offense and shake off some disappointment and shake off some setback and shake off some shame and shake off a critical spirit, eh? Come on, shake off some persecution and some gossip and slander, eh? I want to pull a, a few thoughts out of this passage to encourage us. Believe, us, believe it or not, I will encourage us this morning. Uh, I want to pull out a few thoughts to encourage us, eh? First thought is, Paul trusted God in this situation. Psalm 125.1, it says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They can't be shaken, but endure forever. Come on, and you're either going to live your life shaken by circumstances. If you trust God, you'll be unshaken by circumstances. If you don't trust God, you'll always be shaken by circumstances. And if you're shaking, you can't shake off the snake. You need to be unshakable to shake off the snake. And Paul trusted God. How did Paul just not withdraw his hand? I'm sure it was painful. I'm sure there's a lot of things going on in his mind. But how did Paul not kind of give in to that moment and be overcome by his feelings? He trusted God. And he shook it off. You know, I remember when we uh, first started Legacy and, and uh, like, we're coming up to 10 years of Legacy Church. Come on, can we give Jesus some praise for sustaining what he started and blessing what he started? And uh, when we first started, I remember, um, you know, like, this, my mate rang me up and said, oh, bro, I was just at this uh, public meeting in, like, Monrad School and someone stood up and they started saying all this stuff about you. And... Um, when he told me what they said, it was pretty handy. I won't repeat it because it was just pretty handy. And so I'd just rather it be left unsaid. You know, it's one of those kind of crazy things. Like, man, people saying this about you and that about you. And when he said it, my heart just sunk, man. I'm like, come on, we all need a friend like that. That'll ring up and tell you what other people are talking about. <laughs> I'm like, oh, bro, what are you up to? <laughs> and, um, and he said, bro, you should like say something. You should go after them. You should try to get them for defamation and and like, you should do all this. And I thought, man, I should do that. Yeah. I'm like, come on, man. I should like go after them and, and just try and like sort the situation out. And then I, I pray, had the good sense to pray about it. That's pretty good. And, and um, pastor prays. That's a good thought, encouraging thought. And so I was like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I clearly heard the Lord say, do nothing. Do nothing. How many people know it takes more faith to do nothing than to do something in moments? And most, most of the time, eh? Most of the time, it takes way more faith. It's like Exodus 14, where, where like the armies of Egypt are racing against the defenseless Egyptians. And, and Moses is like, what are we going to do? And God's like, what's that in your hand? Use what I've already given you in your hand. But then he, he says, stand still, Exodus 14, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, I reckon that takes faith. When you've got an Egyptian army and all you've got is like you've got no weapons and God just says, hey, stand still, let them run towards you and you're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, and God just said, stand still and the storm blew over. Come on, I don't know what storm you're walking through, but every storm has a beginning and has an end. And you can't fight the storm. When you're in, you can fight the devil, but you can't fight the storm. Sometimes you've just got to weather the storm. And you just got to stand your ground and trust God in the midst of the storm. So I love Matthew 8, where Jesus is asleep on the boat in the middle of the storm. And, and I love it because everyone's freaking out. The disciples are freaking out because they don't have faith. And Jesus is asleep. And then they wake him up and he rebukes the storm and the storm calms down. So you know you've got authority over the storm when you can sleep in the storm. Hey, you know that you've got authority over it when you're not freaking out and running around when you can sleep in the storm. Come on, the reality is everyone's going through something. 
Sometimes you can look at people doing significant things for the kingdom and just think that, man, they're not going through stuff like I'm going through stuff. But the reality is God wants us to grow to a place where we don't freak out when persecution comes, where we don't kind of like, like lose it when opposition and resistance and pain comes into our life. Come on, I reckon God's looking for some people that in the midst of pain, they can stand the line. Come on, they can hold their ground. Faithfulness is underrated in the kingdom of God, eh? Come on, everyone wants flesh, but a faithful man who can find, eh? Faithfulness is underrated in the kingdom of God. But I reckon God's just looking. God can do the flesh. He's looking for some people that'll just stand the ground. Stand their ground and just toe the line and say, come on, I'm not moving. I'm going to be faithful. I'm just going to stand my ground. Keep doing what God told me to do. Come on, he can take care of my circumstances. I'm just going to keep doing what he told me to do. Look at people that are carrying stuff. Come on, I've seen a lot of, a lot of Christians that they're, they're carrying stuff and then they get bitten and they drop it. And God's like, no, you've got to learn to carry some things even when you've got a sore hand. And it's not a popular message this, these days and people don't talk about this and that's why we're building a generation of people that have no resilience. Hey, because something hurts and they drop it. And it's like, man, you've got to learn to carry some stuff in your life. Well, I feel like preaching this morning. Hey? You've got to learn to carry some stuff with a sore hand. And we can look at people and say, man, they're doing great things for the kingdom. They've learned to carry some stuff with a sore hand. Come on, they've learned to praise God when they're under pressure because they know that God's going to work it out in the end. Come on, they've learned to give when they've got needs themselves because they know that God can supply all of their needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Learn to carry sticks when their hand is hurt because they know that God will heal them. Second thought, this is my favorite thought this morning, is that Paul didn't react, he responded. Oh, this is challenging for me, preaching to myself this morning. That's why when I grow up, I want to be like the Apostle Paul because I look at my life and I react way too much. Like I, I, I just, I look and I'm reacting to stuff and I feel like God's like, no, you got to learn to respond. I think I'm doing better than I was. But I still think I got some, some room to grow in this, eh? Acts 28, 5. Paul shook off the snake into the fire, and he was unharmed. You know, I love what isn't in this text. I love what's in here, but I also love what isn't in here. What isn't in here is that Paul didn't lose the plot and start swearing. Paul isn't yelling. He isn't throwing his sticks on the ground and saying, stuff you got, I've been serving you all my life and this is how you repay me. Come on, what is in this text is a miracle. What isn't in this text is also a miracle. Well, we like, we baptize a lot of people in the freezing cold water, eh? And um, like, I remember we baptized Josh Ace a little while ago and we, I put him in the water. He's got asthma. I put him in the water, in the freezing cold water and the brother stopped breathing. He's like, it's so cold, man. He's just like, <laughs> and then he got out, had an inhaler. He said, no, I'm getting baptized. So he went back in the water. We baptized him in the water, right? The freezing cold. Man, one of my, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but, but one of my secret fears is that we're going to baptize people in the water and their first word out after baptism is going to be like an expletive, eh? That's my secret fear. It's like we baptized them and my first word, their first word out is like, Welcome to your new life in Christ. Eh? It's like, man, like, honestly, it's a secret fear that I've gotten. So as far as I know, only one person's done that. As far as I know, only one person, and they put them back under, baptize them, and no, just joking. No, no not even. Not, no, but, but not even. But, but Paul, gets, <laughs> Paul gets bitten on the hand, and notice what he doesn't do. Come on, all he does is he shakes it off, and he keeps going. He doesn't quit. He doesn't pull back. He doesn't resign to playing life safe. He doesn't say, I'm just going to take it easy from now on in case something worse happens to me. He just shakes it off and he keeps going. He doesn't react. He responds. And one of the signs that we're growing in our faith is that we learn to respond to things, not react to things. I love the scripture in Romans 8, 14. It says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. It's this Greek word, hoios, uh, of God, and it, it's translated as sons, and it's distinct from this other Greek word, technon, which means little children. So Paul is saying all that are mature sons of God, they're led by the Spirit of God. 
And if we're constantly being led by our circumstances, if we're constantly being led by our feelings, come on, if we're constantly being led by what the devil's doing, come on, this is my concern with people whose full-time job it is, is to research what the kingdom of darkness is doing on YouTube. That's my concern because they're just reacting to what the devil's doing. Come on, you can't live your life focused on darkness and expect to be full of faith, eh? And, and it's like some people, I think, if all we're doing is reacting, then we're at best being led by our feelings and at worst being led by the devil, eh? Something happens and we react. Come on, don't worry, I'm preaching to myself as well, eh? Someone mistreats us, we react. Someone hurts us, we react. Our kids are playing up. I know it's the end of the school holidays, it's a hard pill to swallow, but our kids are playing up and we react. Come on, our spouse disrespects us and we react. It's getting worse this morning. Someone argues with us and we argue back. If we're reacting, we're not being led by the Spirit. We're being led by something else. Sometimes the way we react to a problem creates a bigger problem. You know what I mean, eh? Someone's gossiping about us, so we go and tell 10 people. And that small problem became a big problem, eh? And we're reacting to things instead of being led by the Lord. Come on, I just, I'm sharing this because I I really feel like God wants to build some strength and some capacity in people not to just live reacting. If if you live your life reacting, you're going to destroy all your relationships. You're just going to keep churning through relationships, one relationship after the next. You know, if you just keep living your life reacting, eh? I remember counseling this uh, lady a while back and she had like full on massive anger issues and would kind of like go into a rage and attack her husband. And um, it's pretty, pretty full on. And um, I remember just sitting down talking with her and she's like, Pastor, I can't help it. And I'm a pretty nice guy, believe it or not. Uh, subliminal messaging. And, um, and I just went to agree with her. And I'm like, yeah, you know, like just like a minimal encourager, just agreeing and listening. Come on, active listening. And as soon as I said yes, I, heard the, I had felt this feeling like, eh, and, and I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit just say, that's a lie. And so being the nice guy that I am, I'm like, that's a lie. You can help it. In fact, you're the only one that can help it in your life, eh? Come on, she'd grown up in an angry family and just lived her life reacting, and the Holy Spirit was trying to teach her to respond. Well, I feel like that's a good word this morning, eh? I feel like that'll bless your life, eh? But the last thought this morning is that Paul didn't quit. Paul didn't quit. Good, Acts 28, 9 to 10. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, as a result we were sh- showered with honors. And when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything that we would need for the trip. Come on, Paul shook it off, and because he didn't quit, a a chief heard about it, and Paul prayed for the chief, and he got healed. And then everyone started bringing sick people. That sounds like a revival to me. Come on, they built a fire in the natural, then a fire broke out in the spiritual, and there was revival on that island. I reckon everywhere we see God moving in a significant way, we see a team of people who have learned to shake it off. I just want to encourage you with this last thought this morning. Don't end, underestimate what you've got to bring to the table. Well, while I was praying this morning, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, there's people and you're underestimating what you've got to bring to the kingdom of God. Come on, you just look at what's in you. It's just a pile of sticks. It doesn't matter if I bring my sticks and chuck them on the fire. It's a big fire. You know, what, what are my handful of sticks? But imagine everyone having that mentality doesn't matter if I bring my handful of sticks. You're never going to get a fire going, eh? Come on, it takes everyone's little handful of sticks to come in and, and bring their sticks into the fire and chuck it into the fire for a massive bonfire to happen. Come on, people are like, man, I just, it doesn't matter what I've got to bring or nobody would miss me if I didn't turn up or nobody would miss out if I didn't bring my gift. And come on, I want to tell you that your pra- even just your praise, coming into the room this morning and bringing your praise is powerful. I love the story of Paul and Silas, and they were praising God in prison, and every other prisoner got set free. Come on, sometimes your praise will set the person next to you free. Come on, don't underestimate the power of your praise to just 
to unlock heaven and to release the kingdom of God into a room or into your workplace. Don't underestimate what you bring, the faith that you bring to the table. The kingdom of God needs people who hold the line. Don't underestimate what you have to bring. God can do big things with a little boy's lunch. He can do big things with a shepherd's staff. He can do big things with a scarlet ribbon. He can do big things with a slingshot and a stone. He can do big things with a donkey's donkeys and a donkeys. He can do anything with anything but a donkey's jawbone. Come on, I, I, good time to wrap it up. How about we stand to our feet? Just getting too excited about singing Shake It Off that I'm losing it. But come on. Maybe you're here this morning and you're carrying some stuff in here this morning and the word of the Lord to you is shake it off. And I don't want you to leave thinking that this is something that you can just like, you can walk through stuff and just shake it off without trusting God and without bringing it to God. It's not a self-help message, eh? It's not like, let's just, sometimes there's some things and you struggle to shake it off. You can't just shake it off. But you can bring it to God. You can have faith in God. And in the presence of God, you can shake that thing off. With the grace of God working in your life, you can shake that thing off. And I reckon maybe if the team could come up, we're going to sing this song. And what I want to do is just create some room. Maybe you've come in here this morning and you're carrying shame. Maybe you're carrying disappointment. You know, I've been discouraged when everything is going great in my life and I've just woken up discouraged. I'm like, what is that? I've got nothing to be discouraged about. Uh, sometimes I just got to learn to shake that thing off. It's a spirit. It's a snake that's trying to attach itself to my life. And, you know, you leverage the mistakes we make to try and bring shame into our life. And then we're living our life looking in the rear vision mirror, unable to have faith before God. The Bible says, you know, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence before God. But sometimes there's a snake of condemnation because of something we've done in the past and it hinders us from having confidence before God. Come on, maybe that's you this morning. Want to create some room just to get around you and pray for you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Legacy runs weekly Sunday services. We also run a number of ministries helping the poor. We run an addiction program, a significant social housing ministry, and large community meals, helping show the love of Jesus to our city. If you would like to partner with us, just scan the QR code on the screen or visit us online. Have a fantastic day.